Okay, there we did everything. Bomb. Always wanted to do that. Today we're gonna talk about one of the first uh, replicas I purchased when I didn't really know what I was doing, but I still don't regret buying it. And the, as you can already see, it's a Sima or Saima or Kaima or who knows how you pronounce it, Sima Platinum. So we have the SEMA versions, so those are the like basic versions and the Platinum are the more higher end models. Now obviously from the box itself, pretty bland. So just a black box with all the warnings, what you shouldn't do in all the languages. And then here from Taiwan Gun because that's where I got it from. Their own personal warning in Polish. Some more warnings on this side. And then uh, on the back, we have something about SEMA, etc., etc. the company itself. And that's pretty much it. So a nondescript box, as they would say. Now, which replica is it? I'll, uh, I'll not say that, I'll do the paperwork first. So what you get when you buy one of these replicas, specifically uh, from Taiwan Gun, you get a, a paper saying with the anime, saying what you shouldn't do with a replica. But, uh, well, maybe you should read it, maybe you don't, but common sense. And on the back is a target. We have a inspection paper. So basically it's the number you have to call if there's something wrong with it. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, so uh, pre-inspection. So they always pre-inspect it. Uh, it says who's done it, what they did. Uh, 20, 10 rounds on 0 0.2 grams with the hop up set to zero, obviously. And here are all the results for those 10 shots. Pretty consistent. Three. This is the wrong paper. No, wait. No, 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 it's the right paper. 391, 394, 389, 392, 385. The handwriting is horrible. Is that a four or a nine? No, that has to be a nine. Okay, because this is an eight. Ugh, horrible writing. Uh, sorry, 388, uh, 391, 392. So it's pretty, uh, it's shooting very hot, obviously, because uh, at the time when I bought it, I just picked what shooted the most. And you should pick the one that shoots within the limit or make sure it's set within the limit. So that's this paper, and then you have a handy sheet explaining how you should change the spring, because this is a quick change spring model. So in the past you had to take your gearbox out, uh, open your gearbox more specifically, and then you could change your spring. With this one you don't e even have to take the gearbox out or open it at all, you just have to as the pictogram shows, take the stock tube off and then you can change the spring. So that's another handy sheet. Now, the manual has wandered off. There should be a manual with it. Um, I seem to have misplaced it, but just so you know, there is a manual for it. Now, obviously I haven't told which replica it is, only that it's a SEMA. And the replica in question is a 097B. So a more intermediate AR. This is one of, let's see, A, B, C, and D. One of four, four models. There is an A model, there's a, this is the B of course. Uh, C model, D model, there's even an E or an F, but 
it's about this model. So just so you know, there are other var uh, varieties. You just uh, just put I either A, B, C, or D behind it. Uh, what I can tell you is that this is the sort of in-between model. So you have larger the larger version, which is the A version. So then it will be about here. There's also a, wait, let's see, C, C version. Yeah, it's been a while, so it's a bit foggy. Uh, but to cut it short, uh, either longer or shorter, uh, this is the sort of, as I said, in-between model. So that's the most important thing. But just so you know, there are other varieties. So if you're interested in one of these, you should be aware that there are several other specifications. So first, in, uh, first, before I start on the replica, let's just see what comes in the box. Now, these are not mounted on a replica. I'm not sure because it's I've already had it for two years, but I haven't used it. So that's why I did an unboxing. These don't come mounted on the replica. So those are per se included in the box. Let's just turn it around for you. So what do we have? The replica itself, of course. One mid-cap mag, about if I'm 120 to 150. I think it's a 150 one. Uh, for some reason, they refuse to specify <laughs> which one it is. An Allen key. Is that for the... Hmm, a dubious Allen key. What could that be for? It's included. A silica bag, don't eat those. And that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and there should be a... Where are you? That has wandered off to uh, an unjamming rod. So, but uh, pretty basic, so you don't really get much. Hmm. There could have been a... Uh, No, I forgot it. A mini Tamiya connector, because it's wired to Dean's. So uh, that could have been included, but the box has been opened several times. So uh, it has been misplaced. But I'm pretty sure there was a mini Tamiya connector included in the box. So first impressions. It has a nice weight. It's about 2.2 kilograms. As always, let's start at the front. We have this nice dummy three-pronged flash hider. Very nice. Which makes this very addictive sound when you ping it. And as you can see, there's, well, there is some play in the barrel, but I'm really having to force it. It is grub screwed on, so this is something very important to note. Here is a grub screwing question. Uh, if you plan on removing either this one, or if it's an orange cap, which you shouldn't do, because in most countries it is required by law, so don't remove it. Hypothetically, if you were to remove it, uh, if it's like uh, an orange tip, then they might be glued on or stuff like that. So always try to um, research it. Like, is it glued on? Mostly people on the internet have experienced this issue. 
so you won't have to destroy your treads for you because if you destroy the treads then your barrel is basically useless well you can still use your replica but you can't attach anything anymore so and with this one if you don't remove the crop screw and you try to twist it off you'll ruin your treads so do keep that in mind but it's pretty nice so but yeah i mean you might want to install a tracer or a suppressor so that's something very important to be aware of as i so we have these quite nice sights So these come included, they are very easily attached with a flat head. They are also adjustable. So if you see there, here is a, let me just check, oh yeah. So you can rotate this to adjust the pin. The same goes for the one in the back, again, you can just quite handily diddly again flathead screwdriver a very nice picatinny rail ample space to mount accessories a very nice 10 point let me just check so i don't say anything wrong 10.5 oh no that's the external barrel uh 10 inch hand guard aluminum the barrel is about 10.5 inches in case you're interested we have a nice mock gas plug tube i don't know if you can see it glistening so a nice touch not very functional but it's there so and it does help a bit with stabilizing the outer barrel we have a nice QD sling point. So in the past, they mostly used these bayonet type sling plates, but now more and more it's these QDs. So you basically push and then the ball, two ball bearings on the cylinder go in and then you push it in and you release while well, you you push it in and the ball bearings um get squished and then go out again and they uh, grab themselves on the inside of this and if you want to release it you push on the qd from the back and then the ball bearings go in and then you can take it off qd as it says then we come to the main body this is an aluminum upper and an aluminum lower and of course a polymer pistol grip now as you can see it's very nicely finished off so there's not really i'd say rough finishing it's all very tidily I don't know why I'm starting to sound like Ned Flanders, but there you go. So it's all very neatly um, finished off, so there's no rough edges. It's all nice casting. There's not, not many heavy casting marks or any actually. There's, as you can see, only a selector on the left hand side so it's set up for right-handed shooters so that's uh, maybe a bit of a downfall because most have ambidextrous what else do we have we have a one-sided mag release as you can see there's none on the other side our bolt release
and our pistol grip is very nicely formed. There's not much I can complain about it. We have you have the nice uh, finger groove. It sits very nicely in the hand. And as you can see, my wrist is comfortable and not too much uh, forward. So that's nice too. Not many complaints about that. Our motor axis latch. Sadly, there's no quick uh, adjustment for the motor. So that's a bit of a bummer. Our trigger is, well, very, pretty basic. There's quite a bit of play on it, as you can see. And I will show you when I uh, install a battery. So, But it's still uh, quite nice performance. The selector is very nice. Um, how do you say it? Uh, reassuring clicks, clicks nicely in place, very smooth operation. So that's all good. A non functioning, you in real ones, this is used to un unjam if you have a jam, if you have a jam bullet. So this helps with unjamming, but it's non functional, it's just there for the looks. A very nice. charging handle with a lock locking bolt catch so depending on which replica you buy this does not lock back so you have to pull keep pulling this back and adjust your hop but with this one you can just let it go adjust your hop which is a rotary hop as you can see with the little wheel and it if, I, if you can see it adjusts very easily yeah sorry it's hard to so you see it's very i'm not sure if it unwinds that is something i'll have to um test because this is the first time i'm looking into it uh, long story so but it looks promising it's easy to adjust but still stiff enough that, that it won't unwind and start adjusting itself which is a problem of course because when you've adjusted your hop you want it to stay there so as i told you bolt release very nice nice audible click very functional, no complaints there. As you can see, a metal hop with a sticker from Taiwan Gun B, that it's inspected. And then we come to the back. We have the sling loop for your slings of course but in case you don't want to use that you have another QD on the crane stock talking about the stock it's a six position position stock crane stock with ample space as you can tell and a very handy feature that I like about it the hatch just boom yeah down and there we have our little deans connector so it's wired to deans that's also very handy so Yeah, I'm very bad at showing positions, but it's a six, six position stock and there's yeah wobble, but 
there's hardly any replica that doesn't have a stock wobble so as far as i've as far as i can tell and there's also a very nice uh opening here for putting slings through so again very nice feature we have our nice castle nut it's all very sturdy there's not really that much wobble there's a little bit of play it's very hard to show but where is it there's a little bit of movement in the hop but i'm not sure how much that will affect the play the the performance of the replica but all in all that's the stock there's not really much wobble in it and there's no play between the upper and the lower you can also see how tight they are together the fitment of the hand rail with the body is not bad maybe like half a millimeter so and the fit is very nice as well so there we have it there's our wonderful sima cm097 b a little bit about the internals now do keep in mind um this is all new for me so i'll have to use my cheat sheet cheat sheet the inner barrel is a precision 6.03 inner barrel and it's a brass one obviously uh, very rarely they will install like a stainless steel barrel that i said so what do we have we have a v standard v2 gearbox so that's a good thing that means it will accept most if not all Tokyo Marui based V2 gearbox upgrades like a Titan, uh, if you want to install that Gate, Aster, Perun, and all of that. So it's standard V2 gearbox. It has a sort of MOSFET processor system, but it's more in the in the areas of um, it protects the batteries, it monitors the system. It watches over your trigger contacts because in the past before mosfets and all of that um, if you would do do that you would start to arc because it's a you make a contact so you would start to arc between the contacts and then the contacts would burn out and then you would get miss performance so some solve that by installing uh micro switches but most solve it by installing a MOSFET or Perun gate. But this one isn't that. This one is just basic, doesn't, isn't programmable, doesn't allow you to change the rate of fire and all of that. Just basic run of the mill, but it does a job. So that's something you'll have to decide for yourself. There are other replicas that do offer this from the get go. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's hard to say, like, uh, you shouldn't, you should. That's something you'll have to make up for yourself. The piston is full steel teeth. So it's a polycarbonate piston inside the gearbox, but it has full steel teeth rack on the bottom. In the past, this used to be plastic, all, also polycarbonate or like half and half, half polycarbonate, half steel teeth. This one has a complete row of steel teeth. The gear set ratio is 13 to one. So that's not bad. That's actually quite nice, uh, but it can also always be better. Uh, but uh, for if you're like buying this for your first replica, um, all of this doesn't really matter. So 13.1 is more than sufficient. It runs on eight millimeter bearings. 
So that's mainly the motor. The, the cylinder and the piston head. Those run on the ball bearings and it's a double o-ring cylinder head. So that's nice too. So um, again, in the past, it used to be like uh, just a, a cylinder, but then you would have air leaks and then they started adding o-rings and this one has double o-rings. So again, a nice touch for something that's considered basic. A ball bearing spring guide, again, a nice touch because in the past uh, spring guides, so that's, uh, do I have a picture? So here you can see what a spring guide is. That's the, the, the one you have to undo when you get a view of the gearbox. So as it says, guides the spring and this is ball bearing. So in the past it used to be one solid piece, but uh, you prefer something with a ball bearing because then it will uh, guide and cause better uh, spring functionality. So if you don't change it like I did, because I'm I I was like ooh 380 FPS, very nice. Uh, considering the uh, country limit is 350, but it does about 380 FPS uh, and a rate of fire by 25 if you use an 11.1. Um, but you can use a 7.4. It's a it's a massive debate. You should use 7.4. You should use 11.1. My advice is just ask the store because um, everyone has different opinion and I just like to be safe and ju just go with, uh, do what the store says because otherwise you'll drown in the opinions. Oh, I was actually wrong with the weight. It's uh, 2.7 grams, so that's quite hefty. Aluminum and polymer, black, mid cap, but they won't say the what? V2, steel bar bearing, 12 months warranty. Yeah, yeah that's something I forgot to say. So it's uh, this, the thread on the barrel is 14 counterclockwise. Most have 14 counterclockwise, but there are brands who, who for some mind-blowing reason decide to go with 12 or 11 or 16 so when you buy a replica do do research what type of thread is on the barrel because you don't want to end up with buying something that doesn't fit so the overall length is 37 centimeters and the length of the internal barrel is 29 centimeters. The muzzle energy is 1.34 joules. And that's pretty much it. The retail price when I bought it was 240-ish. Now it's gone up to 270. That's due to uh, increased taxes on uh, containers from China so they can't but r raise the price to be able to still earn something on the replicas but an increase of 30 euros is still doable uh, my personal opinion about this replica is that it's quite nice for its price uh is it good only time will tell of course but uh, the first signs are looking promising but no one really says anything about the long-term long functionality but from what I can tell it's looking as I said very promising so uh, I'm gonna keep this as a backup because um, I've bought a few other replicas and um, HPA based and they weigh a lot less so this will be mostly a backup So just to show you how it looks with the Mac now there is an issue with this Mac so it doesn't Lock as well. So you have to jam it in But most people do that anyway, so it's looking quite nice 
but just to show you yeah yeah of course now it works now there's no problem at all so before i did the video it popped out like six or seven times but now it won't so goody now just to show you what it sounds like on the 7.4 and 11.1 i'll plug in the battery now i'm just gonna put it to the side and put on some silly goggles which don't look well obviously but safety first it's upside down hide my balding head now it's always important to uh, make sure it's empty but in case you're not sure always aim into like a bucket with foam or something just use your common sense so what do we have we have two new prols this is our 11.1 which i'll save for a second time this is our 7.4 in case you're wondering which one it is which type there you go so let's install it it will make a noise that's the self-test so that's the uh, processor checking if everything is all right. So that's a sound saying it's okay. Now you can see there's ample space so you can put it in here or in case for the 7.4, even here. But let's just put it in here. Let's just leave it like that. I mean it fits but I don't <laughs> I don't want to fumble with the wires. Uh, I'll just put it in because otherwise people will think it won't fit. So it's completely in and the battery goes in. So I'll just put it against the bed in case there's a BB in there. It can never be too safe. So this is single. So you can see the, there goes the battery, so there goes everything else. So you see where it catches, so there's quite a bit of take up. But the reset is quite nice. And then full auto, which everyone wants to see quite a nice way of fire and it's actually quite uh, recoil feeling ish so that's quite nice too so let's just take this one out and go to the fun part which is the 11.1 which is vanished oh here it is Ah, uh, that's only one in here. So this one into the main tube. These into here. Completely folded. So now we know it's empty, so that's... So just to watch the trigger. A lot snappier, of course. And then, of course, the fun part. Very nice. So, there you go. Now you know what it sounds like on an 11.1 and a 7.4. Safety first. Always when you're... Uh, working with a replica that's active, uh, put on safety glasses and uh, do it in a safe space. Just, just don't do it everywhere. So. so there you go. That's our SEMA 097B. I quite like it. 
um, it's obviously not perfect, but it's 260 euros or 240 when I got it. So for its money, I quite like it. But obviously only time will tell if it uh, keeps performing and doing its duty as so to say. So I hope you've liked this video. Uh, obviously I'll get a better space once the attic is finished. So it will look a bit more professional and I'll have a more decent space and like a, a range to shoot at. So that's more interesting, but obviously that's something I can't do right now. So, but still it gives you some impression of the replica and maybe help you decide if you want to try one or not, or at least maybe you've learned something, hopefully. Uh, I do appreciate if you give, gave me some feedback. So even if it's negative, um, just in a polite way, of course, uh, I'm always open for feedback, even if it's like you should do that better or should do this better. I'm always happy to take feedback. If you like it, of course, even better. Um, or if you have questions or anything, just feel free to reach out and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. And the main, in main important thing is I hope you've enjoyed the video where wherever you're watching from. And I wish you the best and I'm always here to help. So take care and have a good night or day, depending on where you're watching from. Bye.